All right, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, take a look at some positioning. Now, positioning is a way of moving items from their normal location in the uh, document object model and uh, placing them in different places on the page. So what I've done is I have come into the um, KevinWTharp.com site and I've gone to the lessons section and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with this uh, document that's called positioning starter file and you're you're more than welcome to download this and and all it is is just a very basic document that lays out um, four different divs with IDs and then inside of those divs each of them has uh, one additional uh, object that in, sits inside of them that's nested within them. So we've got uh, box one and inside of it is box one A and then outside of that is box two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just a very basic um, page set up with four different uh, divs which are objects and in, inside of each of those divs is another object which happens to also be a div. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go into um, my software and I'm going to manipulate that. And what I've done here is just at a basic level, I've gone through and uh, within the document I have applied um, a set of styles. And so for box one, I've given it a background color, a height, and a width. Same thing for box two, and I've given each of the boxes their own heights and widths. At this point, I haven't done anything with the uh, the divs inside of those, the nested divs or the children divs, I've only done uh, given the coloring uh, and size to the parent divs and you'll notice that the children divs take on the same properties as the parent divs because they are completely inside of those and we haven't given them any other rules. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at positioning and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I am going to uh, manipulate the properties of this particular element. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to work first with box number one. And what I want to do is I want to come into this positioning section and you'll notice that the width and the height have been um, designated in there. It's the same property that you see in the box. The width and the height are the same thing. If I change it in one location, it's going to change it in the other as well. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and move this red box off to the side so that it's out of the way of these other boxes. So what I'm going to do is since I'm moving it from the left um, within this positioning, I'm going to go into the placement and I'm going to move that 350 pixels uh, from the left border. Um, and it's important to understand that in the positioning what you're doing is saying from the left go however many pixels or whatever size you're doing. If I said the same thing for the top, then it would move down in the page. Uh, so that's an important thing to understand. And if I just apply this, it's not going to do anything because I haven't told it how to do that. And so when I come into the positioning, there there's four uh, types of positioning. We're only going to really talk about three of them here. Uh, the first one is absolute positioning. So if I choose absolute, what that does is it moves that document or, or that object out of the document object model and it allows other things to come in and take its place. So if I apply that, you notice that it moves out of the way and these other boxes come up and take its place. That's because the absolute positioning moves an object out of the normal flow of the content for that page. If, however, I chose to give it a relative, what relative does is it maintains that location that it came from in the normal flow of the document, but it moves it as well. So with the relative, it maintains this section up here where that object would have been, but it moves uh, the, the box relative to that location, but it doesn't allow that to come up. So the difference between absolute and relative is whether or not they allow other things to come in and take their place in the document object model. And that's a really important concept to get a grasp of at this point. Now to really demonstrate how this works, I'm going to go back to the lessons section in KevinWTharp.com and I'm going to go to, um, 
I've got a series of files here under the positioning lessons and I'm going to go to absolute positioning and the way that these pages are set up is that I've got it set so that uh, section one in the document object model, I'll go ahead and show you that by, by turning the styles off. Uh, I've got this section one right here and you'll notice that above section one I've put text that says uh, section one goes immediate below, immediately below here in the normal flow. So if we're in normal flow, this section one is going to sit immediately below that uh, sentence and it's going to be above section two. So we'll go ahead and, and turn the styles back on and what you'll see is that that section has moved out of, and again this is the absolute positioning, uh, so that box has moved out of the normal flow and it has been replaced. Section 2 and Section 3 have moved up into that location and this has gone to uh, wherever the positioning statement I used was. So now we're going to contrast that with relative flow. And so I've gone to the relative positioning document that um, is linked to from the lessons page. And now you'll notice that I'm still positioning section number one, only this time I'm using uh, relative positioning. And what that does is it maintains the space over here in the normal flow of the document within the document object model where it would have set, there's still a space reserved for that element in that um, normal flow of the document object model even though that element has been moved out of that location. And so that is a crucial again thing to understand is that if you're using relative positioning the space where that item would have been is still there and other items can't move up into that. The third kind of positioning that we see is called fixed positioning and this used to be pretty rare to see but it's becoming more and more common uh, and what it does is I'm, I'm going to have to reduce my, um, uh, my viewport size here so that I can scroll is no matter where uh, you're at in the viewport. In other words, if you scroll your viewport, when you have a fixed item, uh, that sits in the same location all the time. And you'll see people using this for navigation or for placing ads or putting information on their page that they want to always have in front of the viewer. Uh, and, and so they use this fixed positioning. Normally it's not right in the middle of the page. I just do that because uh, it makes it extremely obvious to you uh, where that is. Now we'll look at this and you'll notice that with the fixed positioning, uh, it has not reserved the location in the uh, normal flow of the document object model uh, or of the page and so this has been moved out of other things have been able to come in but the, the the primary characteristic that people use with fixed is because it sets that in a certain location in the page so that no matter how you scroll um, it's always going to be in that same location left to right scrolling up and down location scrolling as well and so that's the main things that you need to understand about position.